Hey everybody, this is Will, and in this video I want to talk about one of the common mistakes I see people make when they're trying to use Ableton Live uh, for automation. When they're trying to use Ableton Live to create what I call a connected stage environment. Ableton is controlling, maybe syncing to another Ableton session, maybe it's controlling program changes in main stage on a external keyboard, or maybe it's even controlling lights, lyrics, or video, uh, controlling elements off of the stage that aren't a part of the band. Um, this is one of the mistakes I see often. And if you make this mistake, it could cause a lot of issues further down the road. Uh, and so I want to show you how to avoid that. And I, that all comes down to knowing when to use RTP um, or network MIDI versus when to use a virtual MIDI driver like the IAC driver on um, a Mac computer. So first, let's talk about a, a virtual MIDI driver. Again, on if we're using a Mac, uh, then what we use is called the IAC driver. If you're on a PC, I've included a link below to a, a great software called Loop BE1, which is a fantastic virtual MIDI routing um, software that you can use. Um, but if you're on a Mac, then what we typically use is called the IAC driver. So let me take you over to my Mac. I'm going to go to audio MIDI setup. You can get to this by using Spotlight. Um, the first thing you have to do is set up the IEC driver so you can see it here. You can double click. And essentially what this is, is this is a virtual MIDI driver. So what this means is it's a virtual version of an actual MIDI cable. So I've got, let me grab it here. I've got an actual MIDI cable right here sitting in my office, five pin MIDI cable. There you go. So you're probably used to plugging this guy into a keyboard, plugging the other end into something. The IEC driver is a virtual MIDI cable. What that means is you can, uh, let's go back over to Ableton Live. I could in Ableton Live create what I call a stop track, route the output of that stop track to the IAC driver, create a stop clip like I did here, and then assign that MIDI note to stop. <clears throat> and then in my Ableton Live session, when I get to the end of the file, I could add that stop clip here. And when I hit that stop clip, then Ableton's gonna automatically stop, okay? So that's a great usage for virtual MIDI driver. The most important thing to remember when it comes to using the IEC driver, loop beat you want if you're on a PC, is a virtual MIDI driver is made to be used on uh, one computer. It's made to be used to send MIDI between programs on the same computer. Okay. Um, the IEC driver is basically like uh, using a walkie talkie in your house to radio upstairs to say, hey kids, it's time for dinner if you happen to do that. I don't know if uh, growing up, uh, my dad and his house had like the old school kind of intercom system between rooms. It would be like using an intercom or uh, a walkie talkie to talk between rooms. Okay, so that's a look at the IAC driver. Here's the mistake most people make is they say, I want to use Ableton Live to control this computer over here. So this is another computer that I've got set up. I want to use Ableton Live to send MIDI to that computer. And I want to do it without having to use that MIDI cable. I drop my MIDI cable. I can't be bothered to pick it up. How can I make this happen? So I've got both of these machines on the same network. They are both connected, plugged into uh, a network switch here in my office. And so um, here's a network switch I often use that uh, I'm not using currently, but both of them are connected here. And then uh, I also have the internet connected. Um, so they're on the same network. Now, again, if I'm using a Mac, then our solution and way to do this is use, go to audio MIDI setup here. Uh, go to, let's, let's go up here, best way to do it, uh, MIDI Studio. Let's go to Open MIDI Network Setup. This is what gets us into using RTP MIDI or, again, uh, what's often called Network MIDI. So this is on my Mac. If I show you my other laptop here, you'll see we get a similar setup, see a similar thing. So what I can do is go down to the directory here, <clears throat> select MacBook Pro, which, again, is this computer over here, and I can hit Connect. You're going to see that this MacBook Pro is going to connect uh, over here. My Mac Mini, rather, is going to connect to the MacBook Pro. Let me show you my MacBook Pro. You'll now see that the Mac Mini name is listed there. So what I did with those two computers is I used RTP MIDI uh, using hardwired Ethernet connection on the same network to connect those two machines. Here's the big thing to remember with RTP network. We use RTP network. We use uh, Network MIDI. Uh, again, if you're on a Windows machine, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, you want to use a solution called RTP MIDI, which, again, I've also linked in the description of this video so that you can get to. Um, that's going to function really similar to what I'm using on Mac. But when you use RTP MIDI, it's really important to understand that is for two separate machines. That is for sending MIDI from 
one machine to another. It's from, uh, for sending MIDI from Ableton to a main stage machine. Uh, I've got some tutorials where I show how to set this up and make those connections. I'll link to those below in the description of this. But the most important thing to remember, again, this is for programs, sending MIDI between programs on separate machines. Okay, virtual MIDI IEC driver is for programs on the same machine. It's for one computer. As soon as we have two computers, we're going to use um, RTP MIDI, network MIDI, and that's going to route MIDI between programs on different computers. Now, the mistake I make is I see a lot of people do this. They uh, are on one computer and they route their MIDI, you know, let's say for a stop track, they route their MIDI to the IEC driver and then they say, okay, IEC driver, uh, I wanna go here, that's gonna go to the network. And then they go to their other computer here and say, okay, I wanna take from the, the network uh, to, to this or whatever. Uh, and they make some sort of connection there. Again, it's important to understand the difference between these two. There's no need to do any of that routing whatsoever when you're trying to send MIDI between two different computers between programs on two different machines if you do that it's essentially like again let's go back to our example of a walkie-talkie it's essentially like using your walkie-talkie to walkie-talkie your kids and say hey kids uh grab a cell phone and call mom having them hold up the phone to the walkie-talkie so you can com you can communicate why in the world would you do that when you could just pick up a phone and make a call directly so that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. If you make that mistake, what ends up happening is one, you're overcomplicating the setup. Often it just won't work. Uh, I've done a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with people that reach out and say, hey, we're trying to control ProPresenter with Ableton. We're having issues. Can we set up a session? And I'll say, make sure you do this. And they go, uh, "You know, let's still meet. And I say, well, I promise you I can solve it in like two minutes. It's because you're routing to the IEC driver, then IEC driver to network. And they say, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and connect. So don't make that mistake. Make things simpler for you. Uh, make it easy for you to uh, to use this and um you're going to have success when you're using Ableton Live to create a connected stage environment. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're wanting to do more of these types of things, you want to use Ableton Live to control um, uh, production elements to maybe send MIDI between uh, multiple devices. Uh, I want to invite you to join me uh, starting on June 7th for one of our From Studio to Stage coaching cohorts. Now, if you're actually interested in creating what I call a connected stage environment, then I would suggest you join the connected stage uh, cohort. Cohort. What's really unique about our training situations is um, it's an eight week in depth kind of setup and process. And so um, you're going to get eight weeks of what I call guided learning. What that means is each week we're going to focus on a specific topic on specific courses. And um, I'm going to kind of set the vibe for what we're talking about that week. But here's what's really cool about this. The content is ready whenever you are. So we're doing what I call a flipped classroom. Right? And I'm sure you've heard this term before where you watch the material on your own. It's on demand whenever you want to. Uh, but then we will come together to essentially do the work. We'll come together um, every single week for weekly office hours for an hour over Zoom. Um, and it's limited to five people. So it's not like there's going to be tons of people on the call. But we'll come together once a week and you can ask any questions you have. You can say, hey, I'm trying to control ProPresenter. It's not working. I'm trying to control my keyboard. It's not working. Uh, and you're going to be able to get help to make that happen. Now, on top of all that, you get an exclusive community just for your cohort. And again, uh, it's limited to five people. So there's only going to be five people in that community. That's where we're going to communicate uh, throughout those eight weeks. Um, that's where you're going to get the weekly prompts and the weekly kind of setup for me as well as any additional material. Um, and so it's a really great focused, again, experience and environment for you. But wait, there's more. On top of that, at the end of the eight weeks, you're going to get a digital badge that you can share off to show your hard work. And this is going to be a verified badge, which means no one else um, can just take this logo and share it because it's going to be verified and linked up. But here's what I think that's really unique about this coaching cohort is if you got all that, that would be great. It'd be fantastic. At the end of those eight weeks, you'd really understand how to create a connected stage. But on top of that sort of experience, um, on top of uh, a really exclusive cohort based kind of guided learning experience, you also get uh, one year access to the site included in that. So yes, we'll go through those eight weeks. We'll talk about the specific topic, whether it's our connected stage cohort, whether it's our leading worship with Ableton Live cohort, 
or it's our running tracks with Ableton Live cohort. We're going to talk about all of those things, but after that, you get access to every single course on the site. You get access to every single download we have on the site for free. You get a free drone pad every single month for free, a drone pad expansion uh, for our drone pad player every single month. You get a exclusive call just for from studio to stage students, exclusive discounts for from studio to stage students as well. So within the price of coaching, you get access to all of that. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure you register before um, uh, the end of May. We start June 7th and when, um, and so we'll close registration at the end of May. And as a reminder, only five people. So we're limiting this so that it's a really exclusive um, and hands-on experience for whoever joins. So if you're interested, head to from studiosage.com slash coaching. Click the link in the description in this video. If you have any questions, reach out to support. You can contact us, support at from studiosage.com. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care. Have a fantastic week. Bye, everybody.